Hey every pony and every brony out there, and I am Princess Twilight Sparkle here, and I am from the Maxi Toys, obviously. And welcome back for some more of the Sonic's Game Gear Marathon this this particular month. And welcome back to more last play of Sonic Spinball for the Sega Game Gear for Slash Sega Master System. So last time we managed to, uh, managed to um, completely done with uh, these three levels in one video, which are essentially Topsy Caves, and Lava Powerhouse, and The Machine. And today for this episode, we're about to continue on and move on to the final level in the game, as you probably guessed it by the title of this particular level title card, we're going to be exploring through the final showdown. Which, unlike the Mega Drive version, they usually call it just the showdown, but in the Game Gear and the Master System version, they decide to call it this the final showdown. That's only because this is essentially the final level in the game, so... Easily, this is easily the hardest level in the game, but it's only because of, not because of the final level in the game, not because it's too hard or anything. I think it's probably because of the culmination I've already established earlier, is that the physics themselves are entirely messed up at one point, which I think is pretty situational if you want to get those key symbols so badly. Even especially noticeable, they have to deal with this really, really, really awkward physics in this game. So even then, though, that unlike the Mega Drive version, sure, the Mega Drive version was really impossible in the showdown level because you have to deal with all sorts of um, gimmicky stuff. Like, for instance, in the Game Gear version, that you can simply just manage to, um, unlock those um, security doors in order to actually just manage to get yourselves a Chaos Emerald. Whilst in the Mega Drive version, they have to deal with these a whole bunch of switches, which even then are that I consider the Mega Drive version of the showdown level is by far the hardest level in Sonic Spinball. Not to mention the boss battle as well was actually really um, pesky as hard as all hectic as always you ever will be. In order to actually get yourselves the electricity in this level, is that it feels really odd is the fact that you need to actually um, Go for this little um, green um, octagon shape um, formation until you actually go through it. Then you should be able to actually activate the electricity stuff to actually protect you from the lava. So, of course, most like lava powerhouse is that if you do manage to touch by the lava, you lose a life instantly. So even then, that should be worth a while though if you're actually just to point things out right now. So um. Yeah, in regards to this showdown itself, or the final showdown, this is easily the hardest level of okay? You know, the hardest level in the game, that's only because of the, you know, the screwed up physics and all that stuff. Honestly, I don't find this to be that challenging whatsoever. The only time it makes it a little bit challenging is the fact that, you know, the screwed up physics and all that stuff, so... That's the only problematic I have with this entire game of Sonic Spinball on the Game Gear and the Master System version, honestly. In fact, Sonic Spinball on the Game Gear, or the Master System, I believe the Master System version of Sonic Spinball never saw the light of day on the Wii, on Nintendo Wii's eShop, uh, no, not eShop, the uh, Nintendo Wii's Virtual Console version, probably due to the um, horrible physics and all that stuff, and plus the emulating on that, is actually a really complicated thing to do. So they decided to actually put in the three uh, Sega Master System games, um, Sonic Games Trilogy, which are Sonic 1, Sonic 2, and Sonic Chaos. Which even then though, those games are really, really good on the Master System version, probably due to the screen resolution and all that stuff, but Sonic 2 is easily the hardest game in the entire trilogy of Sonic games on their Master System. But still, sometimes you can't really actually just to explain about, to negative about the, um, the difficulty all these games usually handles out. So anyway, and there we go, folks. We actually got ourselves all the chaos symbols now. In this case, uh, much like the machine levels, that you need to actually collect like five chaos symbols in this level. So even then, though, once you collect all five of them, then you can actually proceed to the final boss in the game, which is easily Dr. Robotnik himself. So in order to actually reach the, um, the boss battle arena in this level, is that you have to go all the way up to the top. So even then, though, it feels more likely a combination of the machine level as far as getting towards it, but at the same time, it might be a bit different because you don't have to deal with this bird bad nigga side of things, so instead we need to do, um, get all the way up there is by simply you have to use these little springy contraptions, which even then though, if you do that, then this will lead you to the final boss in the game. In this case, the fourth boss in the game, so you need, even, that's, that's the case though, anyway. So I have a little bit of a awkward dialogue there. So anyways, um, all you do in this phase here is that you need to actually get, get constantly run, in, run onto these little spinning platforms over there. And if you do that for approximately for the longest amount of time, then you should be able to clarify to actually deal with the real um, Robotnik's face himself. So even then, that um, the final boss itself is really easy compared to how it does in the Mega Drive version, which unlike the Mega Drive version that usually takes place in a Dr. Robotnik's ship, 
But it turns out in this particular version, it usually takes place in the um, something is more accurately out, out of the skies in this starry night. So even then, though, yeah, there's not much anything else to be said here. Besides, there aren't any um, uh, bull crap moments. Like, for instance, like there's no defense system or anything like that, which is a good news. Although the only time you need to deal the damage on him is that you need to actually just let him get out of this little um, uh, little bars at the top. And then once you deal with these... Um, once you deal with him, like, a uh, couple of amount of hits and stuff like that, sometimes it might take a while, then Sonic Spin Ball is finished. So even then, that was it for Sonic Spin Ball for the sake of Game Gear slash Master System. What I found is really odd about this is that it doesn't show up Dr. Robotnik out of this little, um, ship capsule, unlike the Mecha Drive version, so instead it's just more accurately a rotating, um, you know, thing itself. And then every once in a while, as soon as that ship managed to come all the way down to this little mountainscape, um, basically this mountain thing explodes. So even then though, it does remind me of like a mountain or the volcano, basically. So even then though, that unlike the Mega Drive versions, more accurately, I don't know what specific um, tower it's called, but even then though, I need to point things out for that, um, every pony and every pony out there. So, um, yeah, let's talk about the overall Sonic Spin Ball, because I haven't really talked about this, to be honest with you guys. Because even then, though, let's just discuss about the controls in that game. Is that you move around with um, the directional pad with left and right with Sonic, and then you press A to, or actually one, and uh, or two button if um, the, that Sonic can jump. Because uh, usually the Sega Game Gear, the actual hard um, handheld, actually contains only one and two buttons. Even then, though, no alphabetical. Um, you know, buttons or anything like that, unlike the Mega Drive, or even the Super Nintendo, or even the Game Boy as a result. So, um, yeah, that's that great though, so enough about this little Jimmy Jabber. So, um, yeah, let's talk about the overall Sonic Spin Ball for the Game Gear, that is, and the Master System version. Ugh, it sucks. Sorry for a little bit of awkwardness going on here, because as far as I'm aware, that, um, there's no negative things, that, uh, there's none of these positive things I can think about this game, although besides the fact that I managed to complete this game, like, non-stop per day, which even then, though, that's mainly bizarre, most likely for me. But everything else about this version, it's something is a little bit off about this version, off of the ones in the Mega Drive versions. Now, for one, the music is really unmemorable to listen to. Like, for instance, it's all dark and quiet. Or, in this case, it's like, the visuals look really dull in this game, and this is by far the most quiet Game Gear Sonic games you're gonna be ever played. Like, the music is just so bland and dull and slow, and also the physics as well, that I've already established that earlier, is that the physics in this version looks incredibly screwed up, or in this case, looks incredibly spit out. Like, the physics is all wrong in these levels, and everything else in this version is just all bizarre, and all that anything kind of jazz. Almost very similar to the likes of Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the Game Boy Advance, mind you. But still, can't really complain about those between those two. So, um, well, the gameplay is rather simple, but it's just the fact that the physics or the momentum in this version is really screwy right there, which even then is pretty situational of how the fact that if you want to actually get into the actual um, Chaos Symbol itself, you have to deal with these really, really bad physics and all that stuff. So even then, though, that's all there is to really think about. And also, one thing to point things out though is that the controls in um, Sonic Spinball on the Game Gear looks really, really um, stiff at one point, even for stiff jumps and everything. And plus, not to mention the movement on this is incredibly loose, which even then, um, sometimes it's really hard to precise with your um, Sonic's movement while he was walking on the ground. And um, finally, although I've already established that earlier, is that the visuals themselves look really bland and even bleak as a result. More stories may be a little bit identical to the Mega Drive version, but oh well, at least I'm sure if I played the Mega Drive version, then it'll be much more better than this. Well, despite the, um, the, the showdown's difficulty in the Mega Drive version, which I'm sure that will seem the case. So anyways, in this step credit sequence right there, so as you can see, they actually did manage to make advertise the um, Sonic Spinball Pinball Table. And basically, you can see this little um, score chart you actually have. And also, you have to go with this really rather slowly um, uh, step credit sequence, which I think is really, really um, runs at the snail's pace at the moment. But that's only because of how the fact that it's on the Game Gear rather than on the Mega Drive, so that I guess. So, overall... I just really disappointed with this game. See, so Fernando, that this is easily one of the weakest um, Game Gear Sonic games I've usually played. Because even that, that version sucks. Just go for the Mega Drive version. Because even then, though, then the Mega Drive version is really superior when it comes to everything, like the visuals and everything. 
But I digress, so that's it for Sonic Spinball, ladies and gentlemen, and every pony and brownies out there, so, um... Yeah, tune in next time of the Sonic's Game Gear Marathon Department. Next up, it will be Sonic Triple Trouble for the sake of Game Gear. The Game Gear exclusive title for the sake of Game Gear, obviously. And the fourth um, platforming Sonic game to be released on that particular system. And also, that game that came around in 1994, around the same year as when Sonic Spinball came around. And including the... Um, Sonic Drift exclusively in Japan as well. So at this point, won't be discussing about the um, the alternative for you know Game Gear and Master System versions altogether. So it's just most likely Game Gear stuff now. So yeah, that should be a lot expected it too. So even then, now I'm assuming Mickey Mouse is now going to be doing um, Sonic Triple Trouble now. So even then though, that uh, once he's done with that, then we're pretty much going to be moving on to the Sonic Racing games, Sonic Drift One and Sonic Drift Two. Now after that will be Sonic Lap With, and then two Tails games, and finally Sonic Blast. And even then, no, that will be about it. So we're pretty much almost in the halfway point of the Sonic Game Gear Marathon, ladies and gentlemen. Every pony out there. And that's only because of how the fact that we decided to do this on this entirety of the month. So that aggressed though. And also we actually got ourselves five more days to go until Sonic Mania is about to be launching. So even then, no, still looking forward to it. So this is me, Twilight Sparkle. And I am from the Maxi Toys, obviously. And until then, take care of yourselves, and bye.